If you are into anthropology and population genetics, you may have heard of the term basal Eurasian, which is used frequently when talking about admixture of ancient DNA samples from Europe and the Middle East. But what exactly are basal Eurasians? In a 2014 study, geneticists has sequenced the genome of a 7,000 year old farmer from Germany and eight 8,000 year old hunter and gatherers from Luxembourg and Sweden alongside with other ancient genome to better understand genetic makeup and history of ancient Europe. The early European farmers or EEF were the group of people that spread farming from the Middle East and Anatolia to Europe. And according to that study, these people derive a significant amount of their ancestry from an even older group of people called the Basal Eurasians. Anyway, what do we exactly know about this Basal Eurasian population? The Basal Eurasian are hypothesized to be the earliest split from the non African humans out of Africa. They split before the diversification of other non-African lineages that went out of the, con the African continent. This means period to the ancestors of Europeans, East Asian and Austronesians splitting up. So basically, they were the first to leave the ship. Archaeologically, the oldest anatomically modern human fossil out of Africa was discovered in the Arabian Peninsula and it's dated to 18,000 years ago. On the other hand, and based on genetic analysis, the Arabian Peninsula was the initial site of the out of Africa migration that occurred between 125,000 and 60,000 years ago. and in which a group of humans left Africa to Eurasia through Babel Mandab in Yemen coming from East Africa before being established in the peninsula. Those are people that all the known African living humans are descended from. While the ancestors of other Eurasians group migrated further north a fraction of this population or a group of populations decided to remain isolated in this region remaining in genetic isolation. They formed a distinct ancestral population to many ancient groups throughout the history such as the early European farmers that derived a significant amount of their ancestry from this population. The Middle Eastern Natovians, on the other hand, that were known of inventing agriculture and beer, derived about half of their ancestry from these species of Eurasians. So next time when you're enjoying a beer, don't forget to thank these people. The modern group that covers the most significant amount of this ancestry compared to other populations around the world are the isolated Bedouin populations of Qatar and Negev deserts, making them the most distant relative of all other Eurasians. And also, they are the Eurasians population with the least Neanderthal admixture. This is not due to mixing with sub-Saharan African science Bedouins from Qatar were found to carry less than 1% sub-Saharan admixture. This means that these people were really really isolated. The Negev Bedouins were more isolated than the Qatari Bedouins. Given the current evidence of the geographic range of Neanderthal population stretching from Europe to the Mediterranean through the northern and central Asia, the higher Neanderthal admix in the Bedouin compared to African population and their lower Neanderthal admixture compared to Europeans places the divergence of the ancestral population after the out of Africa bottleneck. It is completely 
inaccurate to think that these Bedouins derived a large portion of their ancestry that is equal to ancient populations from the Neolithic era such as the Neolithic farmer or that they actually inherited their basal Eurasian ancestry from an unmixed basal Eurasian population for example inheriting it right from the source that is completely wrong and inaccurate because they actually inherited it through more recent populations such as the Natovians because if you look at it the lifespan of the Basel Eurasians predates even the emergence of the Semitic language because this Basel Eurasian lived from 45,000 to 15,000 years before present, so that's before the emergence of the Semitic language itself. So these people actually inherited their ancestry by coming in contact with admixed people that had already like some basal Eurasian components so these people inherited it from them and they preserved it by remaining very very isolated we actually don't have any sample from any inadmixed basal Eurasian individual yet and all these conclusions are based on already mixed ancient DNA samples when it comes to haplogroups the basal Eurasian population most likely carried the maternal haplogroup N and the haplogroup N. These maternal lineages are descended from the maternal lineage L3, which is the most common maternal lineage of all people outside of Africa and is even common to some people within the African continent. In other words, this uh, lineage is closely tied to the out of Africa event. Between 19,000 and 12,000 years before present, it is reported that humans lived in isolated refugia in order to survive the late glacial maximum. This visa Eurasian population would have lived in small pockets in the Middle East. An example for this refugia is the Gulf Oasis on the southern route out of Africa. The maternal lineages G and T evidently started to spread from the Near East into Europe immediately after the peak of the last glaciations around 19,000 years ago with major expansions in Europe in the late glacial period. As the planet started to warm up, human migration would increase and mixing would be more common. In modern time, the basal Eurasian components peaks in the Middle East and Northern African population and especially among isolated Bedouins in the desert. If you like our content, please subscribe, hit a like and leave your opinion about this episode in a comment. If you got any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. I would like to hear your opinions about this episode and your suggestions. There will be more interesting subjects on this channel in the next few days. So stay tuned and see you in the next episode.